The world is full of unexplained events, strange and mysterious myths and legends. We may demand a logical explanation for these mysterious things, but we may indeed have to settle with mere speculations. And so many of these mysteries remain an intriguing conversation piece for many people all over the world. Black Mountain is one of these mysteries, a jumble of enormous blackened boulders that actually appear less like a natural formation and more like something that has been placed there. Black Mountain has for centuries been the centre of myths, mystery and fear for many who visit. Black Mountain is different, it is completely black and it looks to be composed of an otherworldly rock substance. Black Mountain has been heavily associated with bizarre, unexplained phenomena and has been intertwined with dark folklore. It is indeed a very strange place which has been long shunned by the local Aboriginal people. The mountain holds much significance for the Aboriginals, known to them as not as um, Black Mountain but rather called Kalkajaka. Kalkajaka means the place of the spear and can be more loosely translated as mountains of death. The Aboriginals share the belief that the mountain originated in the dream time. The story tells of a man being similar to a medicine man who had the taste for human flesh. He killed and ate a young chief and so was banished and fled to the mountains. And on the occasion he would surface to eat a human or two from his own tribe. but. On his last venture out of the mountains, he turned into a goanna to escape his angry fellow tribe members and then had the misfortune of being struck by lightning. And so, being no ordinary goanna, when he was struck by lightning, he exploded, um, leaving large piles of charred rock everywhere. This charred rock became what is known as Black Mountain. Black Mountain is located in the Black Mountain National Park in far north Queensland. Black Mountain appears as a solid monolith of black looming over the ancient forest around it, but on closer inspection you can see it is actually composed of gigantic granite boulders, and many of these boulders measure up to 20 feet long and raise up to at least 900 feet over the surrounding landscape. Geologically speaking, these boulders were formed from solidifying magma around an estimated 250 million years ago. They lack any trace of surface soil. Their distinct black colour is caused by a thin coating of iron and manganese oxides, as well as a film of blue-green algae that covers the exposed surfaces of the boulders. The black colours of the boulders indeed gives them a sinister and foreboding appearance, looking as though they have been scorched by the fires of hell. And these huge boulders are jumbled upon one another, forming labyrinths of mazes and passages which penetrate deep into the mountain. The mountain pushes out gusts of hot air that accumulates from the daytime heat, and this heat actually lends these boulders some rather odd properties. As the boulders become very hot in the sun, when cold rain falls on them, they actually slowly fracture, disintegrating over time, and on the occasion, they fracture in a violent, explosive manner, and this most definitely adds to the ominous and intimidating atmosphere which impregnates the area. And adding to this, when the hot air moves through the underground passages and abysses, it creates very eerie sounds. And these eerie sounds have been described in a variety of ways, sounding like screaming, crying, moaning, wailing, and deep hissing. And from time to time, it has been reported that a rotten stench permeates from somewhere far below the surface of the mountain. The Kukuyungal people of the region have long shunned the mountain. Aboriginal tales tell of the mountain as being haunted and home to various evil spirits and demons who lurk within. These spirits and demons are believed to hunger for the souls of humans. One of those spirits is that of the wicked medicine man mentioned earlier, who was called the Eater of Flesh. Adding to this atmosphere of fear and dread is the brutal massacre of the Aboriginal people that was said to have occurred in a nearby ravine at the hands of early European settlers. 
the ghosts of these Aboriginals are said to still dwell there and they have been heard screaming for their revenge. To this day, the Aboriginals refuse to go near the Black Mountain, Kalkajaka. At Black Mountain, there has been strange sightings of bizarre creatures not known to any man. Mysterious lights have been witnessed on and around the mountain. There has been reports of mentally stable non-believers in the supernatural who have experienced time anomalies, such as missing time as well as time travel. It is said that animals become spooked by the mountain. It is said to exude some type of evil force, which has been reported to actually disrupt navigational equipment of aeroplanes that fly nearby. And because of this, most aeroplanes avoid flying anywhere near the mountain due to this unexplained anomaly. And as well as um, due to the strong air turbulence often experienced at this location, the reports of these phenomena are persistent. In 1991, an aerial survey was carried out by the Bureau of Mineral Resources to test for any possible radiation levels and magnetic disturbance, um, and it showed nothing was unusual. There has also been many accounts of UFO activity due to the cavernous underground chambers deep within the mountain. There are stories ranging from alien bases to lost civilizations stories of ancient tombs and lost treasures believed to reside deep within the many caves which hold lost stockpiles of gold, historic artifacts as well as ancient texts. Some believe that there is a secret alien base which lies underneath the mountain from which emerge alien spacecrafts. They believe that it is inhabited deep down under the mountain by a race of reptilian alien humanoids who take humans to keep as slaves even going as far as believing that the entire mountain was actually built by the aliens themselves. Others speculate that these huge black boulders were laid down by an ancient lost civilization around a millennia ago, believing that this ancient lost society thrived deep under the mountain in a large hollowed out area. Some people believe that this lost civilization is actually still there and not lost at all. It does indeed and um, appear that the Black Mountain lends itself towards magic and myth, folklore and fiction. Black Mountain is a place of mystery and legend to Indigenous and non-Indigenous people alike. The Black Mountain has been referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of the far north of Queensland, owing to stories dating back as far as the 1800s of people, horses and whole herds of cattle disappearing. Black Mountain, Kalkajaka, was a sacred battlefield and the scene of the last spear fight between the black and white cockatoo. The black and white cockatoos represent the um, inland and coastal indigenous clans whose warriors were clashing over hunting grounds. They battled and many tribesmen died. Their bones also remained at the mountain and it, it does appear to be more than one creation story behind this unsettling site. Another creation story goes like this. A long, long time ago, a war was waged at Kalkajaka between the spirits. The fight began between two brothers who were giants. They were both in love with the same woman. They made large piles out of stones and each threw a rock at each other and at the same time killed each other. And so their piles of stones remain there as granite boulders. And like Uluru, Ayers Rock, in the Northern Territory, Climbing Kalkajaka is hurtful to various traditional owner groups such as the Kuku Yulanji, the Kuku Nyongal and the Gugu Yumifa tribes. And even though there are several other rocks and caves in the area that hold spiritual significance and are considered to be sacred by the Aboriginals, to this day they refuse to go near Kalkajaka. Black Mountain is inhabited by frogs, wallabies, gigantic pythons and strange beasts that go by the name of the Queensland Tiger. Of those who have ventured into this collection of huge black boulders, fewer have walked back out. One man who did go in and make it back, an experienced bushman, entered the caves of the mountain with a loaded revolver and a torch. He recalls stepping into the opening, the black mountain caves dipped steeply downwards, narrowing as it went. He found himself facing a 
solid wall of rock and to the right was the passageway which was large enough for him to enter in a slouching position. He walked along carefully for several yards. He noted the floor was fairly level and the walls were very smooth granite. He moved through the twisting and turning passageway as it continued to slope deeper into the earth. He soon began to feel uneasy and as he continued on, he began to smell a sickly, musty stench and began hearing a faint moaning sound, followed by the flapping of the wings of thousands of bats. He began to panic big time and so decided to go back the way he came as fast as he could. His arms and legs were bruising and bleeding from bumping into rocks as he went. He stretched his hands out, clawing at the space, expecting solid walls and floors, but he could not feel them. And at one point, as he wandered into a side passage, he recalls that, judging by the echoes, he had come to the brink of what he believed to be a precipice. The air was becoming increasingly more foul and he began to become dizzy. He began to have terrifying thoughts rushing through his mind, envisioning the giant rock pythons that he had seen around the mountain. He crawled along, losing strength, becoming weaker and weaker and he began to lose hope. He started to believe that he would die within this deep, cavernous, unsettling mountain. And it was at this point of his despair that he saw a tiny streak of light. And on seeing this, he felt he gained some kind of super strength, which caused him to be able to crawl and worm his way towards a small cave mouth. The exit from the small cave mouth turned out to be half a mile from the one he had entered. Once leaving the cave and finally reaching open air, he took a huge breath and fell to the ground exhausted. He later found that he had been down in the caves for a total of five hours, in which most of the time had involved crawling on his hands and knees. He later stated that not even a king's ransom would induce him to enter those caves ever again. I mentioned earlier of the elusive Queensland tiger. This cat-like creature is said to lurk within and around the Black Mountain and has been spotted numerous times climbing through and over the boulders. This creature has been attributed to the cattle mauling and disappearances throughout the area. It is true that of the many of those who dared to enter underground to search this eerie mountain, almost none returned. It was if they disappeared off the face of the earth, vanishing into thin air. Peter Fitzgerald, a local of the Cape York Peninsula of Australia, states that to even consider visiting the mountain, you would either have to be ignorant or totally crazy. Fitzgerald talks of the mountain swallowing up prospectors, farmers, um, policemen, native hikers, a herd of cattle and an entire Aboriginal tribe who were taking shelter from their enemies. Fitzgerald said that the Aboriginals tremble before the mountain. Local Aboriginals described that the mountain produces mysterious sounds similar to crying, lamenting, loud bumps and odd extraterrestrial music. The mountain is swarming with poisonous snakes and huge pythons and the local Aborigines straight out say that this site is cursed and it would be best if people kept away. And so many people view Black Mountain from a distance from a roadside overlook and then continue on their way. If they did choose to venture to the mountain, it would involve a very difficult trek through a primeval forest thicket in an extremely hostile tropical region, um, which is densely populated by poisonous fig trees, vines and fiercely stinging palms. So who are some of the people over the last hundred years or more that have disappeared without a trace? In July 1872, a courier named Philip Grainer went out to look for a stray calf. He and his horse and the calf were never seen again. Circa 1800, a notorious criminal known as Sugarfoot Jack and his accomplices fled to the Black Mountain following a shootout and they were never found again despite a very exhaustive police search. In November 1882, two cattlemen, Harry Owens and George Hawkins, disappeared while searching for stray cattle around Black Mountain. 
A tracker who was sent to search for the men also disappeared. A second tracker was then sent out and this tracker returned completely unhinged, unable to provide a coherent report. In 1890, Constable Ryan went out to track a fugitive who was believed to be hiding in a cave at the Black Mountain. He was believed to have entered the cave to see if the fugitive was hiding there. Constable Ryan was never seen again. In 1892, a prospector known as James Wren vanished while fossicking at the Black Mountain. Circa 1920, two young explorers who are curious and very determined to solve these mysterious disappearances go to the mountain and they themselves disappear. Trackers who were sent in search of these two young men also go missing too. In 1928, a prospector, Q Packer, goes missing while fossicking in and around Black Mountain. In this incident, Packer's body was found later next to his rifle with a bullet wound to his head. And finally, in 1932, a traveller, Harry Page, went missing while hiking on the Black Mountain. Harry's body was also later found and he had died from unknown causes. A great-grandmother to the Black Mountain area, Auntie Marie Shipton, tells of when she was a small child, how she was taught to respect the sacred site. She tells of how she feels angry when people enter without permission or guidance. Auntie Marie explained that it is hard to tell people as they simply want to explore the country that they do not really understand or know what is there. She explains that a lot of people do not respect the Aboriginal culture, saying that many non-Indigenous people think they know about sacred sites and so because of this they should respect the Indigenous people by not walking in these sacred areas. Auntie Marie stated that it made her feel bad about knowing that these adventurous and curious people are heading straight into bad vibes by going there. She said that people who wander onto Black Mountain become taunted by the spirits of their ancestors and this is something you should not mess around with. If you muck around with these spirits, something is going to happen. Gavin Deer, a world-renowned geologist, describes Kalkajaka, the Black Mountain, as being his noisy neighbour. He says the mountain can make random explosive noises when the onion skin weathering of the granite boulder occurs. You hear these big cracks and tumbles, Mr. Deer said, and at night you can hear the wind going through the boulders and it sounds like howling souls trapped inside. Mr. Deer, who is well versed in the mountain's mythology, is quite sceptical of the world of theories around this mountain's alleged energy fields. Mr. Deer states that he has personally tested for himself with compasses and found nothing out of the ordinary. He says, he has talked to helicopter pilots who flew over the mountain. They said that they were fine. He went on to say that the legendary disappearances were more than likely simply mishaps than, than mystery. He said that if you try and climb to the top, you have around 200 calculated leaps you have to make between boulders. If you slip, you can tumble down and you just will not come out. Even though approaching some of the mysteries of the mountain um, with much scepticism, Mr. Deer admits to believing that the Black Mountain does indeed have a supernatural presence, saying that no matter how rational he was, he always made sure he did his best not to upset the mountain. Other bizarre tales are told around a variety of strange beasts that are said to inhabit the mountain, although it is true that this part of the country is home to many unique and endemic species. There are also tales of creatures that lurk there that are far more weirder than one may ever imagine. There are numerous accounts of people observing fleeting shadowy shapes that wander through the mountains. It is unclear if these shadows may actually be some type of real animal, a supernatural phenomenon, or simply a trick of shadow and light upon the black boulders. Aboriginals have stories of their people vanishing at the mountain since long before the Europeans arrived. It is as if the mountain swallowed them up. It is mostly believed that these people most likely fell into the numerous caves, crevices and chasms of the mountain or that they became hopelessly lost when journeying into these dark impenetrable passages. 
So many questions are left unanswered. Did these unfortunate souls simply become lost and confused, ending up dying alone in the mountains, maze of deep, dark caves? Or was there something more mischievous and malevolent at work here? The list of possible suspects is lengthy. Anywhere from demons, vengeful spirits, giant pythons, treacherous caves, reptilian humanoids, aliens, huge predatory tiger-like cats and so much more. There are few who are brave enough or even crazy enough to visit Black Mountain and the few that have have described that on venturing into the mountain they became lost, hopelessly confused and overwhelmed by a feeling of dread and panic. Of the cave explorers who have explored the caves at Black Mountain each have described the experience as being singularly the most unpleasant feeling they had ever felt. None of them wished to ever return to the mountain. This is a mystery that we may never know the answers to. Thank you for watching and if you like this video don't forget to hit like and subscribe and also remember to hit that bell to be notified of my next video.